Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 880, we're going to finish off the row with Noriko Yamaka Yamazaki. For three mana, we get a 3-2 Vigilant Human Samurai. Cool. Whenever a samurai or a warrior you control attacks alone, you may cast target enchantment card from your graveyard this turn. So we want to play Samurai, and we want to play Enchantments. Now, I started off in a really good spot, but I don't know where I ended up. <laughs> um, so, that being said, number one, we need Samurai. Our commander's a Samurai, so we're going to need... Well, uh, I guess let's look at our limited ramp, since we are playing Mono White, you know. Uh, Soul Ring... Marble Diamond, Seer's Lantern, and Hedron Archive. There's not a whole lot of need for it, because this is fairly lower casting cost deck than what I, I normally build. Um, card draw is Inheritance. I know it, it's not optimal, but it's something. So let's look at our Samurai, because that's where I started out. I was like, it's going to be a Samurai deck. I didn't know that I was going to build like, you know, 12 of them with this set, but we have Devoted Retainer, Kondos Haramoto, Araba Moth Rider, Hand of Honor, Inner Chamber Guard, Ijanjo Exemplar, Kitsune Blade Master, Imperial Subduer, Imdeaded Samurai, Takino's Cavalry, Seven Tailed Mentor, Moth Rider Samurai. There he is. We just saw his deck a couple days ago, didn't we? Uh, Nego Bound by Honor. Sunblade Samurai. Takino. And the Sky Bless Samurai. And I, I did pull, you know, the Wandering Emperor. This is a Samurai card in my mind, so um, I put it in the Samurai deck. So now we need enchantments, right? And more importantly, we need enchantments that find their way to the graveyard in order to get maximum value out of our commander. So, I, I thought of something. Back in Urza Saga, they did a cycle, a spoof off of the Circles of Protection called the Runes of, of Protection. And they were very similar in that they cost two mana and they took one to activate. These take one white to activate as opposed to the Circles of Protection take a a generic to activate but these have cycling so when we draw the runes of protection we can cycle them away to draw more cards and then cast them if we need them via our commander's abilities so we have of course the rune of protection white blue black Red, green, artifact, and even lands. Because, you know, sometimes lands will, you know, uh, if you've ever played against some hardcore green decks, you know, a, a, a land can walk up and slap you in the face. <laughs> um, but now, I'll admit, I didn't stop there because I kind of liked the idea of samurai being protected and I was like well what if I went ahead and did the circles of protection as well right um, because number one the circles of protection if somebody can blow them up they will so and this way our commander gives us some recurrable circles and then I added the greater realm of preservation just for good measure because um, it's double we've got a few other enchantments you know we have the dictate of Heliod um, karma yeah yeah I know but uh, samurai don't play with that evil stuff <laughs> I I don't know Karma does speed up a game, especially if somebody has an Urborg. Now, technically, an Urborg could go in this deck. Um, 
I don't have a lot of herbors. I, I've been out of, the, uh, of those for a while because it doesn't have a color identity. I, I mean, it doesn't have a black mana symbol, and it just says lands or swamps. Um, but anyway, uh, if somebody's got an herborg out, this is going to hurt a whole bunch. <laughs> um, now, I have a few helpers in there. The Arden. Uh, you can attach any number of auras to a permanent or a player. Uh, we have a Transcendent Envoy. I don't know how useful these two are since we don't have that many auras. I mean, um, Armored Ascension, of course, we are in Mono White. I love the Call to Glory because it, it is a Samurai card, you know. Um, Rally the Ranks is a fairly decent enchantment for the deck. Um, you know, choosing Samurais, they're going to get plus one. It's an enchantment. Uh, Brave the Elements, good offensively or defensively. Uh, the Eidolon of Inspiration. You know, combat on your turn. Target creature control is plus two, plus oh. Now, this is an enchantment creature, so if this dies, our commander will let us play it again. Now, I know there are smarter ways to build a deck. There are the enchantments that sacrifice to do the thing. Um, uh, there's the um, oh, the one that you skip three cards and you draw seven. That's a great one from way back. You know, there are smarter ways to build it, but I don't know. It's kind of fun. Um, Promise of Tomorrow. Now, I don't play this nearly enough. Uh, you get, at the beginning of each end step, if you control no creatures, each end step, if you control no creatures, you sack this and you get everything at exile back, so... That's kind of neat. Regna Sanction. Uh, for each player, choose friend or foe. I am my own friend. Everybody else is a foe. More than likely. There is a good political uh, aspect to it, but plus one my team, and then they tap all but one? That's a beaten. Dawn Charm. Uh, I, I like the Dawn Charm. Uh, you can fog, you can regenerate, you can counterspell it targets you. All three of those are okay, making for one pretty decent card, you know. Uh, to make a stand, just anti-wrath. Which brings us into our removal. We have a sword to plowshare. I like swift response because creatures without visions are going to tap when they're declared as attackers, so you can shoot them down before they actually deal damage to you. The Disenchant, just a great card. Along with the Seal of Cleansing, uh, there's another one there that we can potentially keep getting back, you know, with our, our commander. Celestial Purge, uh, Lapse of Certainty. Nobody ever sees it coming. I know uh, it doesn't seem like a lot that, um, that they get the spell back anyway. It costs them a draw, but it goes on back on top of their library. But you know what? That psych, that overloaded Cyclonic Rift player generally waits until the last possible moment where they have to do it or else they're going to die next turn. So a lot of times, just that one giant game-winning spell a turn later can be all the difference in the world. I figured why not for the bring down uh, because assist, it, I mean, it, it seems like a very samurai thing. They're all helping... Uh, but Vow of Duty Faith Fetters Return to Dust I, I know I'm playing Return to Dust more and by the way I do apologize for this being the millionth mono white deck in a row it's just the way they I happen to get done with them <laughs> uh, Phyrexian Rebirth and of course Cleansing Nova now we don't have a whole lot of non bases got our two cycle lands the Step and the Desert and then the Rogue's Passage to round off Norika. So, uh, I have had... Have I played this? No, I haven't played this. I played the last one. Uh, haven't had a chance to play this one yet. Um, I know I'm wearing the same shirt over and over again. But... Deck number 880 is done. We will go ahead and put it on the wall and uh, 
go from there. Yeah, I'm still sorting through cards. and <laughs> But uh, I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. But we're going to go ahead and shuffle and cut.